couple problems that we're working through in our interface. And what I hope to do in this video is to wrap up the issues around the GUI so that we can get that um, up and running. Now, I'm not going to give you the code for the GUI. You can adapt it on your own, but I'll show you some of the basic elements that are required in order to get your, your GUI built. Okay, let's go back to the code and fix the bugs that we have right now. All right, the first one we've got is that the Arial font couldn't be imported because it couldn't be read. Okay, this font is the one that came with our download of the built-in skin here. This is the one we got from the, st from the store. And for some reason, this file's been corrupted. I'm not going to use this anyway. I'm going to use the Arial file that comes with the Unity, uh, the, the Arial font that comes with the Unity base program. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this in order to get rid of my error. And that's going to be okay because when we look at the skin that we're using, we can see that we've assigned it um, Arial here. And hopefully this is going to go away. Um, once it recompiles. Okay, meanwhile, back here, we've got an error that says on line 34 that the color picker is a field, but a type was expected. Okay, so let's go back to our code. Line 34, right here, this is a generic, and so it's expecting a type, not a field. So I just, I just mistyped it. Okay, save the file, come back, and let's see, what do we get? Okay, I still have the problem with the font, so let's go back and look at the sources. And still missing that. It thinks it's there for some reason, but it's not. Hmm. Okay, well, let's keep going on our other errors. Uh, let's come down here. We know how to solve that one. Uh, line 34, the color picker does not exist in the current context. So line 34, it's looking for something called color picker. I called it something else up here. So let's unify the names. Great, come back here. Now line 36, color picker does not exist on line 36. Just got the name wrong. Pen color does not exist on line 49. new ones. All right, the name pen color does not exist on 55. Great. Okay, warnings. Now let's see. Argument, exception, getting control zeros. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Somewhere it must be getting referenced by something. Let's see if the font's being referenced. Font's being referenced in here. I'm checking to see here if the font is referenced. Uh, custom style. Nope. See, I don't want to waste a lot of time on the video trying to debug this, but something's going wrong with the file there, and I'm not quite sure what it is. Let me just check one more thing. Let's see. Let's try running it and see what we get right now. All right, it's running okay, so it must... Must be okay. Class defined in the script file name. My network helper does not match the file. The file name. Yeah. Okay. Great. So it just needed to be refreshed. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to go back to the GUI where we're drawing the GUI, and I want to go through and I want to show you how to draw the elements that you're probably going to need. This is like when you're in Android and you lay out the GUI in XML. Instead, in Unity, all the controls um, are done dynamically, at least as far as I know.
Um, so let's go back to the GUI code and say, okay, um, when you have uh, a GUI, uh, when you have a Unity script, there is a um, function that you can just like start and update, which are built-in ones. Uh, there is one called on GUI, and this one is called whenever a GUI needs to be drawn. So we're going to go ahead and add that function in there. And the first thing that we're going to do in that um, function is we're going to add, tell it to use the skin that we've got uh, listed up at the top. So my GUI skin is the public variable. Here's where we make sure it's set. And then whenever we update the GUI, we're going to make sure we're using that skin. And that skin is a collection of all the different styles that we can edit in the, in the, um, here in the inspector. So if we want to uh, change the font in the box, we can set the font here and the font size, for example. Okay. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to create some elements that we can edit. So one of the first ones we might want to do is we might want to edit the group name. So we know we initialized the group name here, but let's create a field that we can put the group name into. I'm going to say, uh, because the group name changes when you edit it, uh, every time we edit the group name, we're going to change it. We're going to set it equal to uh, a GUI. Careful it doesn't, ex careful it doesn't autocorrect incorrectly for you. GUI.text field. All right, we're going to create a text field. GUI is a Unity built-in um, class from which you can get all of the UI elements. So we're going to do a text field, and the way this works in C-sharp is you specify a rectangle that the text field is going to um, exist in, and we'll make it go from 0, 0, the upper left-hand corner, um, as far wide as the screen is, and then we'll have it go down uh, 100 pixels so we can keep track of it. And then uh, the information that we're going to put in it is going to be uh, the group name. And if we do that, then what happens is we'll get an element on the screen, uh, which is a text field, which means it's editable. It will be initialized with whatever is in the variable group name. And when it's done being edited, it will be reassigned to the group name at the end. So we know we want to do this for several things. We want to do this for our drawing name. right below it at 0, 100, comma, screen width 100, 100 tall. Okay, and um, let's see, what else might we want to do? Uh, we might want, after that, to draw the color picker. All right, now the color picker, the color picker uh, gets drawn in a special way that you figure out when you um, download the asset. And I'm just going to plug that in here because I happen to know what it is. So we're going to go through all the color pickers that we know about in our local variable that we assigned initially. And for each one of those, we're going to draw the green. And I just know that it's the way to do it from reading the documentation. All right, so now where is it going to draw it? We didn't specify any rectangles or anything. That gets set in the inspector for the color picker. So we know that our drawing name went to 0, 100, went down to 200. So we're going to put it at 0, 200 back in the inspector. Color picker, 0, 200. And actually, we'll move, move it over just a little bit. All right, and back to our code. All right, after our color picker, I think that what I would like to do is to have a pen down, um, something that enables us to click so that we can start drawing. So we'll say pen down. I don't like the way I named that. So I'm going to say pen down. That's whether it something whether the pen is down or not. Okay. And we'll say that the pen down is going to be equal to a different GUI element. And for this one, we'll use a toggle button. Um, the setup for the toggle button is similar, where we give it a rectangle in which it's going to live. Uh, and so we'll go 0, 0, 100, 200 is the color picker, so 300 for this. And we'll make it as wide as the screen. And make it 100 deep. And then there is uh, the variable that we're working with. And a label that we need to label it with. Okay, 
as a side note, because we did this GUI skin, we're going to get a unique, we're going to get the styling that we have set up in the GUI skin. But if we wanted to add a different styling, we could put that styling at the end here as an optional final parameter. We don't need to do that because it's going to default to this GUI skin that we have set up here. Okay, after pen down, the last thing that we're going to um, add is we're going to add, we'll add two things. First thing we're going to add is we're going to add an upload button so that we know that when the user is ready, we can upload the information to the um, server. Um, and so we're going to do that by adding a GUI button. Um, and we'll add, put it in the rectangle. This one will go from 0 to 400. Screen width wide. Okay, and we'll give it a label that is upload. All right, now the way you check to see if a GUI button has been clicked is when on GUI will get called in that case, and we can check to see if the GUI button has been clicked, then this function will return true. In that case, we're going to do something that says upload the data. All right, well, in order to upload the data, we're going to need access to get to the network uh, helper that we have set up, and we don't have that yet, but we'll continue making our GUI for the time being. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to um, write up any error, any debug information that we get from down here on add debug, because I find that kind of helpful. So for each um, string that is in our debugs. Uh, we'll set a location that we're going to draw them at, start 500, and we'll say we're just going to do a GUI label that helps us to see what's going on. We'll put it in the rectangle and it'll go from, it'll go from zero to wherever temp y is, we'll make it as wide as the screen, and 100 high. And the information that we're going to put there is whatever our debug string says, and then we're going to increase our location by 100, and then because we might get lots and lots of debugs, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, remove, um, uh, remove elements from our debugs so we never have too many. So while debugs count is greater than we'll say we'll just put four at a given time. We say debugs dot remove at zero. Okay, save this up and we'll go back to Unity and see if um, we'll save this up and go back to Unity and then see if we've got any errors. Alright, give Unity focus and it'll compile. Looks like we got away without any trouble, and let's run it and see what happens. Okay, great. There's our group name, there's our drawing name, there's our color picker. And if we had if we had more screen real estate, we probably would see other things. Let's see if we can get that. There's our pen down, and let's see if I make the window even bigger. You can see there's an upload button. Great. Okay, so what have we just done? We've just added all the components to our GUI without a whole lot of functionality. And so the next step that we need to do is we need to connect our GUI into the network object. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to get location information. So we'll pick that up next in the next video.